Hey everybody, I'm Roxanne. This is White Cotton Quilts. And today's YouTube video, we're gonna talk about easy ways to make a square and a square unit, which is right here. Let you see that real good. And we're gonna talk about making four to time uh, flying geese units. And this method works for any size. Today's video, I'm just gonna show you the size that's needed for my upcoming pattern, which is a two and a half by four and a half uh, flying geese unit. And we're also gonna talk about how to trim those down because it is made larger. Now, that unit is the same size as these right here. So we're gonna do that today and let you learn about that. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. So stay with me. All right, everybody, so here we are at my sewing machine. And to do the, the first method we're going to talk about is one of the ways to make a uh, block and a block unit. So the block and the block is the unit that I just showed you where it looks like you have a block inside another block and the block that's in the middle is on point kind of. So the first method I'm gonna show you is the method that's easiest for beginners. Uh, this is the method I would recommend if you are just starting. Yes, there's some waste to it. So those of you that don't like the waste, um, please, uh, you know, you don't have to do it this way. This is just solely for the beginners because this is a tricky block to do. And I want the beginners to feel like they can accomplish this block. So until they get a little more experience underneath their belt and then they can try the other way that I'm gonna show in just a minute. So this way, what you're gonna take is you're gonna take a starting block. So your starting block is going to be whatever size you want that unit to finish at. So in this case, I want this block to uh, finish at four and a half or unfinished at four and a half and finish at four. So you're gonna want this to be a four and a half unfinished block. So here's my four and a half inch square. Now this is going to be, end up being the center of the unit. So this is gonna be the little center uh, block that looks like it's on point. So we want to start with a square that's the size of the unfinished unit. So this is four and a half. And then you're also going to need four little squares. These are different colors because I'm using up scraps. So you're going to need four little squares that are two and a half. Now you're going to know what size they are because you're going to take this square that you're starting with, and it doesn't matter what size you're wanting to make it. So this is the cool part about this method is you can make this any size you want. So you're gonna take this square. This is your base square, and you are going to measure it to the halfway point, which is fairly easy because, you know, you know that your unit is either going to be uh, if like this case, it's going to be a half because you have to add in your seam allowances on each side. So this is four and a half, which means that your halfway point is going to be two and a half inches. That's what you need. You need two and a half right here. That's your halfway point. So you're going to take these little two and a half inch squares. And what you're going to do. Now remember, it's a half because you have to do your seam allowance. So it's not gonna be a fourth, it's gonna be a half. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pencil, a ruler, whatever you're, whatever you're gonna mark with, but you're gonna need a ruler and you're gonna need a pen or a pencil. Um, since this is scrap, I'm just gonna use a pen. It's gonna be in purple. It's not gonna matter, these are scraps. This isn't actually gonna get used on anything. So you're gonna take your ruler and you're going to lay it on the one of the, or you're going to do this to all four, but you're going to lay it on your small square. And you're going to lay it corner to corner. And you're going to draw a line straight down, corner to corner. So let me get you in closer so you can see this. There we go. All right. So you're going to draw a line lining it up from one corner to the other. And I'm sorry I'm blocking y'all's view. I'm left-handed here. So we're gonna draw a line straight down. So there's your line. 
And we're going to do that to all four of them. So I'm going to do that to all four right here. And you want to be pretty accurate with this because this is going to be your sewing line. So be pretty accurate with this line because it will matter. So just make sure that you get this lined up good. And here's the last one. Okay, so now we're gonna take our base square and you're going to place, we're basically snowballing these corners. So if you know what snowballing is, snowballing is where you sew a piece, and in this case, we're gonna lay this on this corner with the line going across this way. And then when we sew and trim off and fold back, that's called snowballing. Your finished block will get, be back to this size. So you're not losing the size of your starting block at all. It's going to be back to that same size. So we're going to sew this one here. And we're going to sew this one on the opposite corner. And we are going to line these up. I mean, you want them right in the corner, right on the edges. They need to line up really good. This is the one part of this block where you have to be kind of exacting. So we're gonna sew on that line all the way down. Go slow if you have to so nothing shifts on you. I recommend pinning, but I've been sewing for so many years, I really don't have to pin anymore. Line this one up because it shifted on me. go right down it all right so now what you're going to do is you're going to have a unit that looks like this and we're going to take you can use your rotary cutter I just like to use a pair of scissors and we're just going to cut a quarter of an inch away from that seam so that's what I'm going to do now and we're going to do it to the other side There we go. This is the little bit of waste that I was talking about. So you're gonna have that little bit of waste. Then you're gonna go to the ironing board and you are going to press this back. I'm gonna finger press it so I don't have to heat up my iron right now. So you can see you've got a piece right now that looks like that. So now we're going to do the same process, only this time we're going to do it to the other two corners. And again, you want to get that on there for you so you can see. You're going to want your lines to run from the center top, from the center top down this way. Let me get you. There we go. So you got your line going from the center top down this way, center top down this way. I'm gonna do this one at a time because I did not press this. It's trying to curl up on me and we want this to be exacting as possible. So I'm gonna do this side first, make sure that this corner's laying down. Make sure that everything is lined up good. I'm gonna sew right down this. I flip it around I'm gonna do the other side like I said these are not the greatest colors but they work for an example again you want to make sure everything's lining up on those side edges you are overlapping the previous sewn seam that's what you're supposed to do okay so you can see here I have overlapped the previous seam that I sewed just like that and we are going to trim this off 
just like this. And again, you have that little bit of scrap. Now, yes, if you're doing a whole quilt of these blocks, that's going to add up. That's why I'm going to show you two different methods to do this unit. But for now, for the beginners out there, this unit works just fine. Let me press that back. All right. So you can see here, here's our finished unit. It should measure back out to the original starting size of four and a half. So let's check that one, two, three, four and a half. So it's right on. You can see up here, you have a quarter of an inch right here from the tip where it crosses over to the edge of the fabric. That's what you want because that is your seam allowance. So when you get done, hopefully when you sew this into another piece of your quilt block, uh, hopefully, you will still have these cute little points really crisp and clean if you do your quarter of an inch seam right for this unit so it'll look really professional. So that's how you do the snowballing method to make a square and a square unit. So there's another method that I'm going to show you and it involves a tool. Um, which is why I showed you this one first. So if you don't have the tool and you don't want to purchase the tool, you don't have to. You've got this. But I'm going to show you the one with the tool anyways. Okay, so we're back at the cutting table for the second uh, way to make the square and the square unit. So the first thing you're going to need, of course, is your fabric. And I said you were going to need a special tool. Now... This tool is not one of mine. It is actually by Deb Tucker. There it is. I just bought this. It's by Studio 180 Design for Deb Tucker. And while I love this because of the making it larger and trimming it down method, what I do not like is how to go about building the uh, square and a square because it's pretty much the same method um, except you're having to 100% rely on this ruler to get the size of your units correct that's the only thing I don't like um, if you are a person that does wants the minimal amount of uh, waste then this is the method for you uh, if you're a beginner you can do this if you are a beginner 100% uh, you can do this if you use this tool uh, as a beginner. Um, but like I said, you have got to have the tool to get the units correct. There's no other way around it uh, for this method. I've tried. I've tried looking at other people's methods, and to me they were just too confusing to try to get the unit correct other than these two methods. So to me, these are the best two methods for both beginner and more experienced people. And no, I'm not getting paid to promote this. This is just, I've tried a bunch of different methods. And these are the two to me that if I was a beginner or even if I was a more experienced quilter, these are the two methods that I would use all the time if you wanted to make a bunch of these units at once. So we tackled the first way, which was a little bit of waste. Now we're going to tackle this way, which I found was super easy. But like I said, you have to have this tool. This is not an expensive tool. In fact, this tool. Uh, yes. So this tool, Deb Tucker does a wonderful job on. This is the first version. She does have a second version. So this is the square squared. So it'll say square and it'll have the little two up above. And if you remember from math, cla math class in high school, that means it's squared. So this is a square squared tool. She does have a new one uh, that's, I think, larger. But I, since I was testing out version, you know, methods on doing this unit, I just bought the smallest one because I didn't know if I was going to like it. So this is the smallest one. And then she also has a technique sheet. Now this technique sheet goes with the large square squared. The method is the same. The 
The square squared comes with a booklet that has the instructions as well. So you really don't need this if you buy this because it will come with a booklet with the instructions, which is real helpful. But I did both anyways, just so I made sure if I was teaching this to somebody that they you know, could completely understand my instructions. So I have both. So the first thing you're gonna do with her method is you're gonna decide what size you want your unit to be. In my case, it was four and a half, unfinished, four finished. So on hers, you will see right here, I'm gonna put paper up behind it so you can see. On hers, you will see she has, on this side, she has all these marking points. These are for the sizes of the, of the squares and you need that to cut your sizes. So you need this to cut the center uh, square. You, you, there's no way around it. it, it's, you just, you have to. Uh, you can use a strip for it. I found that was a little bit of waste uh, doing a strip, but you know, it's totally up to you. So you're just gonna follow this and this will help you cut the size of your square. Then once you get your square cut, then you need to know what size to cut the outside uh, triangle pieces. So that is also on this side and it's in this chart right here. So you see she's got a chart going down here. Um, and that will tell you what size to cut those uh, triangles for the sides. Then once you get all of them sewn together and you're gonna sew them together the exact same method, two sides, sew, press, two sides, sew, press. Then once you get all of them together, then you're going to use her little, her little thing on the back here to line up and trim down. It works beautifully. I mean, these come out perfect. Um, I did it both ways, just so you guys would have an example. So this is one I did with a stitch and flip. Um, and no, my, my points are not perfect. They're probably better on the other example I showed you. But like I said, I was testing out two different methods. So here's, okay, so here's an example of one, okay, with stitch and flip. This is the one I did with Deb Tuckers. So you can definitely see the difference. I mean, it, it, it does look more professional. It does look, you know, perfectly squared. I do have a quarter of an inch around each side. Um, so yeah. If I had to re recommend a way to do, I would definitely say do Deb Tuckers because it is the least waste. That's probably the only thing that I would say is do Deb Tuckers version because it is less waste. Um, but you do need her tool. It's not expensive. Her tool is definitely not expensive. I think all in all with if just buying the tool and of course it comes with a instruction book. Um, it was under 30 bucks, guys. And if you use it a lot, that's nothing. I mean, it's really, you're going to get your use out of it um, over and over again. Um, and I know I get my use out of, I also bought her Tucker trimmer. I get use out of this every single day. I love this thing. It just takes the guesswork out of a lot of stuff. Um, so I do recommend this as well for trimming units down. And that is it right now for the square and the square. Those are my recommendations. You don't have to follow mine. There's a lot of quilters out there that have different ways. But for me and the way I learn, this one was the best way for me. And still got professional looking units. Um, that's just the way my brain works. Um, so yeah, it's a totally up to you. Those are the two methods that I would use if you were a beginner. Uh, like I said, the snowballing is really easy, but you do have a, a, quite a bit of waste. This way is awesome. Even less waste uh, if you're worried about the waste and the cost of fabric now. So this way would be the best if you were worried about that. So that's it for that, guys. So the next thing I'm going to show is the four to time flying geese unit. Uh, and like I said, this is for an upcoming quilt pattern release so they're only going to be two and a half by four and a half now I know uh if you've sewn with me before or you've tested or something like that I have done big huge units but little ones are a little 
trickier to do in my opinion. So we're gonna tackle the little ones in just a second. Okay, hey everybody. So we're back at the sewing machine again. And I've already cut the units, the sizes that I need for these. So you're gonna start with a five and a half inch square. I've already got mine cut. And in this case, for my upcoming pattern release, these are in pinks. So I'm gonna lay them aside. So you got a five and a half inch square. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, to need four smaller squares. So I have these right here. One, two, three, four. Right here. And just like the the snowballing method, we are going to draw a line corner to corner on all four of them. So let me get you. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a line corner to corner. And since these are for actual pieces that I need, I am not going to use that pencil. Okay. This one's better. So this is just a pencil. We're going to get my ruler. I'm going to draw a line corner to corner. And like I said, once again, we have to be fairly accurate with this. I've got those drawn on there and then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to lay these right in the corner again only this time our line is going to go straight through so we're going to do that with two of these squares it's going to go straight through you want to make sure of two things one that both of these are lined up on these edges exactly. Otherwise it will not turn out right. Two, you wanna make sure that your line you drew, that yes, you're gonna have one laying over the top of the other, that is absolutely what it's supposed to do. But you wanna make sure that the line lines up with itself pretty well. Otherwise you got your line off a little bit and like I said, it needs to be pretty well exact. If you are a new quilter or beginner quilter, you're going to want to pin these. I've been sewing for years and years. I normally don't pin, but if you're a beginner, you are going to want to pin these so they don't shift on you because they will try to shift. So I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch on both sides of this line. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Again, I'm keeping everything lined up. I'm not cutting my thread, I'm just turning it and sewing down the other side. We're not cutting the thread. Leaving that thread connected. A little bit of a bulge going on on this side. So I'm gonna make sure that lays flat. All right. So you can see I've sewn a quarter of an inch down both sides of that line and we're going to cut it apart on that line that we draw. So I'm just going to do this with scissors. Normally I would use my rotary cutter for accuracy, but I'm just going to use my scissors. Okay. So here's the pressing part, and this is kind of important. This is important on my, the big units as well, if you've done my big units. 
you're going to set your seam with the hot press iron. Then you're going to do fold back and press the, the one that's on top. I've tried this both ways where you just roll both of them back and press and it doesn't seem to work out as well. You seem to get this little uh, bump or bulge in the finished unit. So what you're going to want to do is take the one that's on top and press it back first and make sure it's good and flat. And then once you have this one flat, then you can do the one that's on bottom and fold it back and make sure it's good and flat. It seems to work out the best way that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press these and I'm gonna come back to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you the final steps. Okay, everybody, I'm back from pressing. So you should have two units they kind of look like heart shaped, kind of like that. So you're gonna have two of those and you still have two of the little squares with lines drawn to use. So what we're gonna do on these again, is you're going to lay them on that corner that you haven't got anything on right now. And it's gonna go straight through the center between them. You're gonna do that to both of them. Again, you need to make sure that your sides are straight. They need to be lined up almost nearly perfectly, guys. And then you need this line to go straight through the middle of these two. Now you notice on these, there is overlap. That's okay. You will not notice that when you're done. So we're gonna lay that there. And we are going to sew a quarter of an inch on both sides again. So and then I'm going to do it to this one. Now you notice I'm not cutting my thread when I'm turning. And then we're gonna cut it. And now we're gonna cut them apart again between the seams on that line. Like that. Go do this one. I normally would use my rotary cutter, but since we're right here at the sewing table, I'm just going to use my scissors. And then when you press them open, you've got some beautiful looking flying geese units. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna go to the cutting table and we are gonna trim these down because these are oversized. So remember, we made these oversized so we can trim them down. So if they look a little wonky at the top or, you know, you, you know, she got this hanging off or you got too much off the top of it, don't worry about it. Cause we're going to trim that down and I'm going to show you how to trim it down. So it looks beautiful. Okay. So we're back at the cutting table and I'm going to show you how to trim these flying, these border time flying geese down to the correct size. So the first thing you're supposed to do is press them, which I have not done yet. So I'm going to quickly press and then I'm going to get the camera position for you to see exactly what I'm doing and how you figure out how to do this method for any size flying geese unit that you're making. It's not going to matter what size you're making. The trimming down method is still going to be pretty well the same, but it takes a little while to get your head wrapped around. So give me just a second. Okay. So you can see here, I've got my flying geese unit. We are going to flip it upside down. So we know the sizes that I want this to finish at. I want this to finish at two and a half by four and a half. So two and a half by four and a half. We know that halfway point between the four and a half is going to be two and a quarter. That's your halfway point. So we're going to take a diagonal line here. We're going to lay it on our 
diagonal seam this direction. Now we're just going to line up with a two and a quarter mark on our ruler. We're going to line that up with the point of the triangle in the center. Just get it lined right up on there. Because that's where we know that we want that, that to be. That's the center point right there. That quarter inch, it should be lined up right with that point. And if you want to start there and then move the diagonal up first, you can. I usually just start with the diagonal first, but we're going to do it like that. If you want to mark this with washi tape or a marker dot or something so you know that that's where it's supposed to end up every time, you can do that as well. But that's what we're going to do. So we have one, sorry, we're going this way. So we have one, two, and a quarter. We have our diagonal lined up, and you notice how much we have hanging off here. You want to visually check as well that you have a little bit hanging off on this side because it should measure to be four and a half. So you one, two, three, four, and your halfway point. So we do have a little hanging off there. You want to visually make sure you do have that. You also want to visually make sure that you have plenty hanging off here. If this was the, if this in here was the finished spot, you, we're just visually making sure that when we trim, we're not going to cut off a quarter of an inch, you know, right here that we need. So we're going to go this way and double check. So we're going to go one, two, half would be right here between that point and our halfway mark we do have a little bit and we're not going to lose a quarter of an inch so we're good there so everything checks out and then we're just going to trim these two sides one long side and a short side we're just going to trim just like that now we're going to flip it back over to get the two sides that we didn't get before and it's pretty well the same process only this time we know that we want four and a half. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, half. We know we've already trimmed this side, so we know this side is straight. We know this side is straight. So just line up those one, two and a half. Line that up there. Line this up on this side. Make sure that our two and a quarter is laying right here at this point, and it is. So we just got this little bit right here to trim off. Just like this. And when you're done, you should see that your point on your triangles ends up right in the corner of each one. That's where it's supposed to be. That means you've done an excellent job trimming and your unit is where it's supposed to be. And if you want to verify, you can. One, two, half, one, two, half. And it is one, two, three, four and a half inches long. We did it. I'm going to do one more for you to show you again how to figure that out. So the first thing I do is I line up that 45 degree line. Now I'm gonna find my quarter of an inch and put my quarter of an inch right where that point is supposed to be, where they kind of intersect right there. So I'm straight on it. I'm straight on that. I'm verifying that I have a little to cut off there. I'm not cutting off too much there to lose my quarter of an inch. Just like that. There's one. There's two. And we are going to flip because we know we got that side done now. So we know that this here is complete. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, half, lay our half on the edge of this unit. And then we're going to double check and make sure that this bottom line is two and a half. So we're going to move it down because we know that's straight. Our little quarter of an inch is at the point where it's supposed to be. Everything looks good. And we are just going to trim this off. Just like that. And there's another one trimmed. I'm going 
going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys how to do all four of these so you kind of get the idea. Our little quarter of an inch spot needs to go right on that point. And it is. Our 45 degree line is right on that seam. I've got a little trim off there. I'm not going to lose a quarter of an inch. So we're just going to trim just like that. Turn it over. And we're going to line up one, two, three, four and a half, one, two and a half. That's all lined up because we know those lines are straight, so we don't have to worry. Our point is landing right at the two and a quarter where it's supposed to be. And we're going to trim. And there we go. And the last one. So we're going to get that 45 on the line. Looks good. We're going to trim. And we're going to flip. We're going to lay back down four and a half by two and a half. Our quarter of an inch, I'm going from this direction, so our quarter of an inch is landing right on that point where it's supposed to be. Everything's lined up good. We're not losing a quarter of an inch at the top. And we're just cutting. And there we go. There's all four of them completely trimmed for you. I hope that was helpful for you figuring out how to trim these down to the right size. This works for any size unit. You just have to know what the finished unit size is. And you have to know the halfway point. And that's it. You guys have got it. Okay, so that's how you do those two units. I hope this video was helpful. I hope if you're a beginner quilter that this was very helpful as a little tutorial for how to do these two units. Um, I am going to say that these units are in my upcoming pattern. So I'm not quite sure on a release date yet. I still have to get this pattern to the testers. That's why I'm doing this video ahead of time. So hopefully you can work on some units practice cutting, practice the trimming, so that when you get to the release date, you'll be ready to go to purchase the pattern and get to sewing. You guys are going to love this pattern. I just know my pastor, testers are going to love it. And one final word before I let you guys go. This quilt back here, if you're wanting to know, this quilt back here is my A Skein of Geese quilt pattern. This pattern is beautiful. You can just, it's beautiful. It does not go together the way you think, um, as my testers can attest to. Uh, <laughs> they all thought it looked super difficult. It is not. It is so super easy. You make bunches of units at a time and very little waste, guys. Very little waste. Um, so you are going to get stunning results, no matter the colors. If you want to see color options that my testers have done for this pattern to give you some ideas, check out my Instagram. It is all over there. Uh, they did gorgeous job making testers. Uh, some of them turned out I just better than I could have imagined. I love them, love them, love them. This comes in three sizes. So you can make a baby, which is just one block. This is the throw size, which is only four units. And then you can also make a queen size, which is six. So it'll be three by three. So it makes three sizes, pretty good sizes. Um, like I said, this one hanging is just the throw. So it's just four. And you can, like I said, make it into six, which would be 
a quilt three by three and that's huge guys it makes a super large queen size and you will just love it it's a stunner so that's it for this video please do the things like subscribe share um follow me on instagram check out my website guys for all of these patterns these patterns are all available all of my patterns are available on the website but only in pdf if you want a paper pattern you will need to go to my etsy shop and it is white cotton quilt no s if you're hunting for it uh so the etsy shop has both pdf and paper plus you can find my cute little turtle pin cushions if you haven't seen those yet um and some other cool things on there you can shop the website just has the pdf version of these patterns right now i have not added the paper version so I'm slowly trying to make a transition from the Etsy to the website. So I'm testing out that website to see if I like it or uh, I may stick with the Etsy shop. I haven't decided yet. So <clears throat> that's enough for today. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of the followers. I appreciate all of the comments I've gotten on previous videos. I try to answer everybody's questions as soon as I, as soon as I see them. Um, and if you have any questions, if I, if you feel I didn't cover something or I might've missed an instruction or I wasn't detailed enough on something, please let me know. Um, I will be more than happy to either clarify it for you, or I may do another updated video to clarify it that way. So thank you so much guys. Bye.